1913, women in Ireland were stuck between two very momentous events. Uh, one was the passage of the, the first Home Rule Bill through the uh, Houses of Parliament in 1912, of course deferred for two years. But what had happened there was that, that suffragists, as they were, um, had hoped that the Irish Parliamentary Party would include a demand for female suffrage in that, an amendment to the Act that would allow for that to happen. That didn't happen and they were very disappointed with John Redmond and John Dillon who made some pretty extraordinary remarks about what female suffrage would do to the world. Um, and at the other side we've got the outbreak of World War I coming in 1914 which causes the postponement, the indefinite postponement of the Home Rule Act in any case and a shift in emphasis in terms of the fight for suffrage. Now the battle for suffrage begins in the uh, mid 19th century with people like Isabella Todd and Anna Haslam who are constitutional suffragists who are lo spend their time lobbying um, parliamentarians, seeking uh, reform through constitutional means making friends in high places, doing all of that and gradually building organisations on the ground largely composed of middle class women um, who were looking to achieve female suffrage. In 1908 we have the foundation of the Irish Women's Franchise League by more militant people like Hannah Sheehy Skevington and Margaret Cousins and they are following the example of the Women's Social and Political Union run by the Pankhursts in Britain uh, in terms of being more militant. So they start breaking windows which is much less than was happening in Britain and in the North it must be said. Um, some of them are arrested. In 1912 you have the infamous Cat and Mouse Act which applied to the entire United Kingdom where women who went on hunger strike and protest against not being treated as political prisoners were force fed. Uh, in Ireland only two prisoners were force fed, Mary Lee and Gladys Evans who were both English suffragettes who came over here. One of them attempted to burn down the um, Theatre Royal and the other threw a hatchet at uh, Prime Minister Asquith and nearly got him and brained him. Uh, so these were quite serious crimes of course. They were force fed, there are graphic descriptions of that uh, to be found in uh, contemporary papers. Um, the others went on hunger strike but uh, didn't go so far as to be force fed and under the Cat and Mouse Act uh, were let out for a while and then back into prison again. So we have by 1913 a situation of some uncertainty. It looks as if the Irish Parliamentary Party in which, on which many suffragists had pinned their hopes for female suffrage is not going to come to their aid in terms of the Home Rule Bill. They're going to be facing into 1914 and that of course changes everything.